Wuben is back with another Kickstarter project, this time with a smaller version of the side-by-side -side X-Series light using two 14500 batteries side-by-side -side and three LED lights at the front. Wuben sent me this early production prototype to take a look at and to help promote their Kickstarter campaign for this light, which is how they're going to be selling it. The Kickstarter ends December 1st, 2022, so if you are watching this before then, make sure to check out the link in the description below, and if not, I'll try and find some links to where you can get it to after that, but it might be a little while. And while you're in the description, make sure to check out my social media links. I know some of you guys are following me, but a good majority of you probably aren't. So if you're on social media, I'd appreciate you giving any of those channels a follow. For packaging and accessories, since this was an early prototype, it didn't come with a box or really any of the contents. If you were to buy one, I'd expect you to get a full retail box, the manual, charging cable, and a lanyard at a minimum. What we can do is look at the construction and design though. The uh, looks are pretty similar to the X1 Falcon which was the much larger light. It's a 21 700. This is 14 500. So you can see it's just significantly larger. And that means that the X2 is much smaller. It's got similar design language as the X1 and the uh, X0 Knight, which was also another Kickstarter project from Wuben. So kind of a fun look to them. It's got sharper angles and I kind of call it kind of a space age look. It does have some places here for glow rods. I'm not sure if tritium tubes come in this size and currently with the pricing and the uh, availability, it'd be hard to get some anyways. So they show glow lights or glow tubes going in these uh, milled out sections to give the light a little more style if you want. That is something you'll have to do on your own, none come with it. The light is being made from aluminum and it's being offered in three color options, a standard black anodizing, a gradient ramp that's uh, got this white color fading into kind of blue, and then this white MAO version. Now, I've become a fan of Metal Arc Oxide. I've got three lights now with it. It's not the most durable finish, but I think it looks really cool and it's different for a flashlight. On the MAO versions, you've got black front and tail caps, and I think that'll help with the wear. Black anodizing is more durable, so that should help. There are also some versions gonna be coming with different materials. There's a copper version, and then there's four different anodized titanium versions too. So a little bit something for everyone. The light is offered in two LED options. You've got Samsung LH351Ds, which are high CRI and a neutral white. And then you've got an Osram P9, which is gonna be a little cooler LED, non-high CRI. And not every LED and body combination are currently available. The light here is held together with several screws. You've got screws in the back, screws for the clip, and screws for the front elements. They very clearly do not want you to disassemble here. This is where most of your markings are, and hopefully you can kind of see that. However, I did disassemble it with my uh, Weira Hex 1.5 millimeter keys and was able to unscrew the back without an issue. What I found inside was a pair of what I assume are 14,500 batteries in a pack and labeled as 2000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volts. I couldn't fully remove the battery pack, so it must be attached to wires inside the head here with the switch and the charging port would be my guess. My guess is if you really wanted to take this apart and replace the batteries, you probably could by undoing these hex bolts and getting in there a little bit closer. I'm guessing it's either a connector or soldered onto the board, and it could be done if you really wanted to. So I'd call the batteries semi-replaceable, but most consumers and even flashaholics probably won't do that. It's a shame because I think Wubin could have designed this and maybe made the light just a hair longer and had that battery pack. Use standard batteries or have a battery pack in there that would be easy, more easily replaceable, even if you had to do some undo some hex bolts to do that. The button here appears to be basically the exact same button that was on the X09. It hinges open here, except it seems to be a little bit of a revision. The same idea here, it hinges open. You've got your touch compacts here that are kind of spring-loaded. Then you've got uh, your switch itself there. That's the clear kind of plastic that you can see there. You've got an LED indicator for charging status, and then you've got the USB-C charging port. Now, if you're like me, you say, hey, that charging port's vulnerable, but it turns out it's not. It is uh, waterproof itself, and at least with the cover down, it should keep most dust and dirt away. So retention, my light did not come with any of the options that Wuben is advertising on their campaign page. It looks like they'll have a lanyard option option that attaches at the rear and there is a lanyard hole here for that and then they've got a lanyard that's got integrated USB-C charging cable with it too which is kind of neat. My light did ship with a largely improved clip here that's on the back that's also very large. This takes up pretty much the entire length of the rear of the light and it is removable if you don't want to run it. I don't see myself using this as a light that I put in my front 
like pants pocket like I would a lot of round lights just because of the size and the big clip here but you could if you wanted to I could see more people using this though like in a rear pocket or on a vest or on some mole webbing things like that unfortunately with this switch here you're gonna want to you're gonna basically need to use lockout mode because it doesn't take a ton of force to turn that on and lockout's easy with just four clicks and it flashes once and now it's in lockout. I measured the light at 3.35 inches long, 1.55 inches wide and 0.8 inches thick. I measured it at 4.33 ounces with the clip and the batteries installed and the light is rated for IPX68.8. I do have a couple comparison photos here with similar lights, side-by-side uh, -side lights that I have, mainly the uh, other Wubens in the family here. There are two LED options for the Wubin X2 Owl. There is the Osram P9, which produces a few more lumens and I believe is a cooler white temperature. And then you've got the Samsung LH351D emitters that I have here, which are more neutral and high CRI. Each version has three of the same emitters side-by-side -side here with a custom optic. And I measured those Samsung LEDs at a CCT of 4460 so right pretty much perfect in your 4500 calvin or neutral tint and 96 cri duv was right in the middle here so no ugly greens or anything like that and the beam here does have a bit of a non-round profile as you'd expect but it's really not bad even at shorter distances here and my night shots will do a decent job of showing that. There is PWM here on all the modes, but it's pretty fast and I don't see it with my camera or my eyes. Here are the night shots for the Wubin X2 Owl. This is on turbo, about 1800 lumens here. And you can see the beam is round. It's kind of oblong lengthwise longer. And this is around the Samsung LH351D emitters, about 4,700 Kelvin, 96 CRI, pretty decent beam here. Throws to the end of the neighbor's fence, which is good 40, 50 yards, something like that. No problem, but doesn't throw much beyond that. Decent beam, not really kind of that crossover between a flood and a thrower very useful beam i'd say it does have a lower mode which i've got running here here's the lowest mode about five lumens or so bumping up here is your medium about a hundred lumens and here is high at 400 lumens pretty reasonable output nothing crazy now i don't have a lot of good lights to compare this to this is just a unique profile with these LEDs. The Wubin X1, the largest competitor that looks like this light, is about 10,000 lumens here. So it's just not in a different LED. It's just not a good comparison beam for this tonight. So again, here is turbo, and I've got it oriented horizontally, and I'll kind of turn it so you can see. At a distance, it's not too bad. But if I look on the side of the house, you can kind of see how that shape is oblong. So there it is perpendicular, and there it is horizontal. I did manage to do a little bit of output testing with my homemade lumen tube, which I'll picture here. And these numbers that I'll be reading are at 30 seconds, so FL1 standards, and I'm comparing them to the what Wubin claims is their output. So for turbo, I got 1,750 lumens, about 97.2% acclaimed. High is 312 lumens, 78% acclaimed. Medium is 80 lumens, 80% acclaimed. And low is seven lumens, about 140% acclaimed. And take that with a grain of salt because low lumen outputs aren't uh, my lumen tube strength. So for heat and runtime testing, I did my owl tests here with the Samsung LH351D emitters using the default settings since those lower modes are adjustable. Turbo lasted for about 90 seconds before stepping down uh, to about 600 lumens. And there it was very consistent consistent for its total runtime of one hour 17 when the light turned off. Max heat during this time was about 43C, uncooled at the 40 minute mark, so just fine there. I also did runtime test comparing turbo high and medium, and turbo's runtime total was one hour 17, high was two hours 50 minutes, and medium was just shy of 11 hours. So the user interface here seems to be the same as the X1 Falcon, so I'll just put what I had written for that. The light does arrive in lockout mode, which is what you want four quick presses turns that on or off, single press to turn the light on, long press then to adjust between your three modes, double press to go to turbo, 
anywhere. And the light does have blinking modes, which you can get to by triple pressing. And then you triple press again to get between strobe and SOS. The light is programmable here for its high, medium, and low modes. There's a range that it can uh, use in those settings. So you can kind of tweak it to exactly what you want low to be or medium to be. It's kind of a neat feature. I will let you read the manual and figure out how to do that and give you the exact ranges. As mentioned before, there are two 14500 lithium ion batteries inside with a total capacity of 2000 milliamp hours according to Wuman. These are non-user replaceable. I did my first charging test by letting the light run out till it shut off. I then hooked it up to my testing equipment and used an X-Star 45 watt USB-C power source with my own cable rated for 100 watts since I didn't get the Wuman one. The light charged in two hours, 37 minutes. Max average during this time was one amp. And the charging here and the charging curve here, um, I felt like we maybe was a little bit aggressive at the beginning. It just basically started at the uh, one amp level and then uh, decreased as the light charged. For two batteries though, that's a very safe half C charging curve. I tested the uh, USB-C port as well for USB-C PD and uh, had no issues there. So my conclusion is that the X1 Falcon was a pretty large light. So making a smaller version here is a logical step to take. And I like that they went with a 14500 option instead of an 18650. I still think that 18650 might be a little bit big. The X2 Owl, I think would be a size that ends up being a better fit for most people. As you can see in my hand, it just a natural fit and I've got medium sized hands. I'm not sure the switch version here makes a ton of sense just because that paddle is easy to hit. It is a better design than what was on the XO Knight. It's a little less easy to press, but still something I wouldn't feel comfortable with putting in my pocket or in a bag without being in lockout mode here. So I think lockout is really important if you end up using this light and gonna carry it or move it around with you. I like that Wubin is offering so many colors and materials here from the beginning. While I'm not a huge fan of established companies using Kickstarter, this does give them a good method to determine the demand for the specialty materials or different emitters. The LED choice here is a good one with the Samsung LH351D option seeming to be the default for most options. It's a good neutral white high CRI option in my opinion and plenty bright. The beam profile is pretty good despite being the LEDs in a linear fashion. Too bad here though that the batteries are not more user replaceable. I think they could have done that and uh, made it a little bit more ecological friendly so you could replace the batteries instead of chucking the light when you're done. So overall a solid option if you want this type of side-by-side -side form factor that's a little bit different of a flashlight and doesn't look like your typical round light. The Kickstarter our campaign for this light here runs through the end of November 2022. So if you are interested in looking more at it and picking one up, check out the link below in the description to where you can find this one. I don't get any commission or anything like that. It's just uh, helping to promote the campaign itself. It looks like Wubin is expecting to ship these out pretty soon, January of 2023. So you won't have to wait very long if you do decide to participate. As always, let me know what you guys think of this light. And if you're interested in picking one up, I'd love to know. And thanks to everyone who's subscribed to the channel and made it this far. I'll catch you on the next review soon. Thanks for watching.